Hello, folks. This is Joe from iGeek Scene. I'm here after hours for a special interview with the Harp Twins. How are you two doing today? Uh, we're doing very well. Thank you. Good. Tired, a little bit tired. It's been a long weekend, but it's the best kind of tired, I think. Yeah. Yes, this is directly after the Grand Rapids Comic Con. I'm sitting here with both Camille and Karen Lee. Mm -hmm. So thank you two for this interview opportunity. Oh, now, thank you. Oh, shucks. <laughs> now, most of the times um, when I'm ever interviewing musicians and stuff like that, I always avoid those questions of like, how'd you get started? And I'm still gonna do that. And I know a lot of people have asked you about like harp related questions. I wanna start off with a topic that's near and dear to my heart and that you two are into, metal. Ah, oh, very nice. Yes. Your metal head. Oh, a huge metal head. <laughs> but are you a harp head? Actually, after checking out quite a bit of your stuff, I do enjoy your work. <laughs> Awesome. And no, I'm not saying this just like, ooh, I'm with the Hop Twins. No, I really have legit enjoyed your music. Like, good jobs on the covers, I mean. And I do like the fact that you incorporate, like, leads into some of your songs. So I was like, yes, especially, like, um, the lead from, or the solo from uh, One. Ah, yeah. So actually, that's a good question to start off with. Why <laughs> did you good. choose to simultaneously play Metallica's One on a single harp? Okay. What was so special about that song? Ah, well, we've, we are really big Metallica fans, and we've covered quite a few Metallica songs. And we've always wanted to play something on one harp, like both of us playing on the same yeah. harp. And, but we didn't want to do it kind of arbitrarily. We didn't want to just pick a song randomly. So it was, and it was this really amazing thing where we had been talking about it for a long time. Like, what could we play in this? And then one day Camille came up to me and she said, oh, I know what we should play on one harp. And I said, oh, and she said, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kennerly said one by Metallica, and I said yes. So. We just we both had the same idea at the same time, it was which is very hard. strange. Yeah. Yes, that's actually my favorite Metallica song of all time. It's a good oh. one. I mean, Injustice for All is just a great album yeah. from start to finish. Oh, yeah. it is. So, uh, it's a great road tripping like song. Just, oh, for sure. Yeah. But it's like I love the emotional impact of that whole song. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. and along with the video, just it's great. <laughs> Now, another metal band I'd like to talk to you about. Favorite Iron Maiden songs that you haven't covered yet? Oh, my gosh. So oh, that's hard. Many. I think it depends mm -hmm. on the day. Yep. Probably it depends on the day because our favorites change. Um, we're, Maiden is probably our favorite, favorite band of all time, mm -hmm. and we've covered a lot of our favorites. Our, our favorite Iron Maiden song is definitely Fear of the Dark. Yeah, and we love Dance of Death. We've done oh, that yeah. one. Done well, The guess, Trooper. We've done Run to the Hills. I think... Hallowed be, my, Hallowed be Thy Name would be. It's cool. Phantom of the Opera. Uh, Ace is High. I, I don't know. Oh, we can't choose so one. <laughs> we don't have to choose one. Well, oh, songs. So, but you've already, uh, you've already said quite a few, so that totally works for me. <laughs> right. Have you seen Maiden in concert? We haven't. Oh, wow. I, oh, well, online videos, but that doesn't really count. We'd love to. I know they're, you know, they're going to be touring the U.S. again, and the, the problem is we tour so much ourselves, so we can't book tickets away in advance because we're always booking our own shows. So it's difficult because we're trying to make a living. No, I completely understand. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you're, you're the this is the life of an artist, and I, I do appreciate the fact that you two are cutting out and you're doing your own thing. You know, I mean, obviously. It's a grind, but you still keep doing it. So I have massive respect for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate, oh, appreciate that. that. So I read in an interview that you said some of your favorite bands who you haven't covered are Elevati, Angra, Within Temptation, Dragon Force, Camelot, and Black Sabbath. So I take it that you like folk metal and power metal. Do a bit. We do. We really yeah. love metal in general, um, especially metal that has that has a melodic. Uh, especially that has a melodic undertone to it. Yeah. So uh, that's why one of the reasons why we love Maiden so much. Although we have now covered Black, Black Sabbath. Sabbath so. We have, yeah. Two girls, three harps. <laughs> we and and, and we've paranoid recently. Yes. Yeah. And so we have two Black Sabbath. Yeah. And like now. you were like purposely um, um, changing like the video to like give that feeling of unease, like yeah. for like paranoid. Oh, yeah, for paranoid for sure. We wanted the editing because we do all of our own video editing, but we wanted that Same song. Same Oh, cool. Oh, nice. we, did, we wanted that song in particular in our arrangement to have this uneasy feeling. So we had these kind of a little bit more abrupt changes in shots. Than kind, we of, might kind of some jarring cuts and edits and things like that. Yeah. Was there any particular songs by Elevati that speak to you? Oh, mm. oh my goodness. Because I, love... I know like they have the hurdy-gurdy in there and stuff. That's, yeah, that's pretty cool. I love, uh, I love Innis Mona. Innis Mona. Because it's, it's based on the old uh, Tri Marta Lod. This is an old folk tune. Yeah. They did their own thing with that. So that's but really we, cool. We, we've done a lot of, actually, we've done more symphonic metal, too. We did Ice Queen yes, by we, Within Temptation. Okay. And I don't know if you are 
Ah, so many. We, we really do love symphonic metal. And yeah, so we'll probably do more in the future. So yeah. like bands like Therian? Yeah, we haven't, yeah, so haven't far, yet, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, like I said, I'm quite the metalhead, and like I guess you weren't expecting this, were you? Like, well, it's okay. People don't expect it from us. But, so. yeah. but no, and but that like when I've read in interviews, like people are like asking you questions as if they're doing gatekeeping. That's like a moronic decision. I'm like, you're people. Um, we're all people, so like, and we love metal. Why, like, oh, I'm gonna ask you these questions to test your knowledge on it? Yeah, like, yeah. I feel like sometimes that happens when people judge a book by its cover, that and sort of think, thing. Oh, you don't maybe look like somebody that I would expect to enjoy metal or be a metalhead, so they don't necessarily trust us. I'm like, okay, go ahead, ask us questions because we'll be able to answer them. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that um, fair share of things like that happen to me too. Ah, uh, yes. You know. So have you considered venturing into black metal or doom metal considering that some of the bands are quite symphonic with their compositions? Oh, that's a good question. I think it's pretty unlikely that we'll do any black metal. Uh, it's not really something that we listen to a whole lot, so yeah. I don't probably think that we'll probably do black metal, but I don't know. There's, there's so many bands we do love that we plan to cover more of in the future. Yeah. So. Um, what about typo negative? Oh, that's a good question. We, we get quite a few requests for them. Um, don't We haven't listened to them a whole lot, so I'm not sure. Maybe we have we'll to, have to start listening to their catalog more to get more of a feeling of what we might want to cover if we did someday. Love You to Death. Um, one of their biggest hits is a beautiful song from start yeah, to finish. I, I might, have, might have heard that. Yes, I, I know of that one, so yeah. maybe we can... Go right back, take a listen, there. see what we think. Um, um, are you familiar with Opeth? You ever thought about covering yeah, some of their songs? Yeah, I am familiar with yeah, them. Yeah, maybe someday. We, we, do get, we, we do so many metal songs that we have a community online that really loves metal as well and our harp covers of metal. And I think we probably, we're, we're focusing more and more on original music as well. No, so. I did want to get to that too. Oh, wow. okay. So yeah, it's, it's, we definitely, we, we're not going to stop covering you know, metal or a soundtrack or anything. But um, we have a lot of uh, songs that we've written ourselves that we're starting to release now. And we've been really blessed to have a, a great amount of support for that. Yeah, yeah. so we're gonna also branch into that more. So it might mean a little less time for uh, covers, but we'll still be doing covers for sure. And a final cover question. Has Dirk Manning asked you to do any covers of Ghost? <laughs> I don't know if he's Actually, asked I don't know we if We might have tuned it out if he had. <laughs> Poor Dirk. We don't mean that, Dirk. <laughs> so on a few of your tracks, such as Nordic Solstice, Beneath the Midnight Sun, The Dragonborn Comes, Norsk Yule, is it Yule? Yeah. And North, you include vocals. So inspirational or favorite singers? Oh. Um, Stevie Nicks is yeah. probably one of our all-time favorite singers. She's just amazing. So. Uh, yeah, just one of our idols for sure yeah, but we, we, uh, most of those that you mentioned are our original songs we for our own oh vocals. that i do know okay. <laughs> for most of uh our stuff with it we don't try to really imitate anyone we admire other people's singing styles but i feel it's best to have your own style and instead of imitating someone else's the, the way that our voices sound best and work aren't necessarily the same as some people that we really enjoy listening to. Mm -hmm. so. so it seems like you're, I mean, you've included more and more original stuff as of lately, and it yeah. seems like thematically it's about um, heritage and, um, well, nature. Is that like the what you're striving for when you're, I mean, because obviously at some point you're going to create an album of all original songs, or at least that's what I would like to believe. <laughs> Is that, um, the themes that will be continually running out, I um, mean, running through like the new album or oh. a, a future album, should That's I say? That's a really yeah. good question. I, th I think you might be onto something there. Yeah, we, <laughs> I think uh, our, our kind of Nordic heritage does definitely inspire our original compositions. Yeah, Norwegian heritage, and so uh, we really do love exploring that. And the, uh, I don't know, yeah, your, your, your heritage means so much to you everyone's does and so uh, that's something that we definitely explore in our original songs and i think nature in general is is just something that inspires us creatively and musically because we're the type of people that if we have free time we won't go to disneyland we'll go to a, a national park that sort of thing so yeah. it's just kind of our personalities and it's something and we, that we really we film so many music videos outside at beautiful outdoor locations and yeah. there's just something really special about it that you can't get if you're 
filming in a studio or something like that. So oh, nature absolutely. definitely inspires and us. We, we'll, we'll have some fantastical elements in upcoming originals that are nice. to be released because we, we love things that are fantasy and Nordic fantasy related. So you'll you'll be seeing some of that as yeah. well. Oh, geez. Some I of like those myths and legends. And mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of fantasy, nice segue there. Oh, thank <laughs> you. I didn't even know that was your next question. In an interview, you mentioned that Final Fantasy VII is one of your favorite gaming soundtracks. Mm -hmm. Are there any particular songs that you enjoy the most? Oh, that's a good question. There's so Let's many. See, I think one of our favorite Final Fantasy ones would be to Xanark and it's just such a bittersweet song oh yeah, yeah. Final Fantasy love, 10 oh yeah mm -hmm, I yeah. love bittersweet songs so I don't know goodness the Final Fantasy soundtracks in general are really wonderful I love that they run prelude throughout we, we that's what we did we did a medley of prelude and to Xanark but I love how they run the prelude theme throughout the series in different ways and they, they change it every time yeah, so it's I love that it has a metamorphosis but I think one of our I think we're, as far as gaming music, we're really into the Elder Scrolls series right now. Currently, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. our current phase. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played any of the, the Sky, uh, Elder Scroll games. Are you a more of a Final Fantasy guy? I am, but like, like say for instance, recently Skyrim, I can't do it. Giant spiders. It's like, and the fact is- Because our mom, our mom is so terrified of spiders. It's like whenever like these developers, like we got to make them look more and more realistic. I'm like, no, please stop making them look more and more realistic. It's like, I can't do this. Yeah, it's, I understand. The spiders are kind of creepy. Yeah. So I know you did the opening to Sailor Moon and a Saint Seiya medley, but are there any plans to cover any more anime themes? Obviously after you've oh. done your um, original stuff. Yeah, um, we animated some great music, and we've done we, My Little Pony, yeah, which is did. kind of in that realm. Yeah, it's it's yeah. true, we did My Little Pony. Uh, we actually we asked our our subscribers recently whether they wanted our next video to be a classic rock song or an anime song, and they voted for classic rock. So, I so we did classic rock. Um, but enough. you know, we we might do more in the future. Yeah. You never know. Probably There's will. A lot, of, a lot of great themes as well. I wholeheartedly are, agree. Yeah. What is, do you have a favorite? Jeez, um, I love the entire Cowboy Bebop soundtrack by Yoko Kano. Oh, nice. I'm yeah. At, I'm at Tank. I mean, I don't know if you're uh, familiar with that show or like heard the soundtrack. A, a bit. I've yeah. heard a, a bit of it. A lot I've of jazz. A little bit. You know, yeah. but yeah. I don't know. Well, I guess I'm mainly ignorant on this, but I don't know how like well jazz would um, translate over to the harp. But clearly, we, we you two would know. It depends on what it is. I mean, if any, if something has a melody, we can most likely. We've, we've, done, we've seen occasionally done jazz. Uh, it's not our main genre, but it's fun. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Now I would like to ask like a, a question about you two. Favorite ruins that you've explored? Oh, ruins. Oh my yeah. goodness. And probably anything. We, we, we had a tour in the UK for the first time. Was it Wales? Oh uh, yeah, we were in Wales and England. Okay, and that's right. And so we got to see some, some ruins when we were there. We got to film in some old ruins. And I just, everything there, it, th their old ruins are so spectacular because Age is kind of relative, and in the U.S., our you old things. Anything as old as as there, so that that would definitely be a dream to go back to the the U.K. and see more ruins there. Yeah. Was there like any particular castles or ruins that you want to explore, like famous oh, ones? Oh my goodness! I anything. I don't think it has to be famous for us particularly. We actually sometimes like things that are a little bit off the beaten path because there's less people, and you yeah. just feel like you can. I don't know, have that stillness with the, when, when you experience the ruins. Yeah, we love finding things that not a lot of people go to. Yeah. Okay, and um, uh, you are of Norwegian descent. Have you been to Norway? No, not yet. Not yet. Someday. Got to go to the motherland. Yeah. So that would be like a dream tour, I take it? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, now um, we're winding this down, but I did want to ask, um, best concerts that you've been to? That you haven't performed at, oh, but you've attended. Like, oh, oh, that's a bummer. Uh, <laughs> we've loved, actually, I think some of the most influential were, were when we were kids, and we would go to some of the actually classical concerts that our mom would take us to. They'd have free days at the, at the Chicago Symphony or the Lyric Opera, and I think those really inspired us as far as seeing musicians who are really on top of their game. So it's weird because we don't really play classical music anymore, but those, but those things really really inspired us when we were when we were kids and so those memories are really great I think we have great memories of that because we didn't have a lot of money growing up so then being able to go to these huge opera houses and something on student day where they had free for kids that was just really fun yeah yeah is there a dream concert that you would like to attend oh uh, we, we well anything we're performing in <laughs> no 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 no. i mean like as Someday fans with us, as fans. fans would it be maiden um, well, yeah i think yeah, iron maiden think so. just because that, they're one of our favorite bands so that'd be awesome all right, final topic, the thing that I definitely wanted to talk to you about. 
you have an upcoming comic book called Legend of the Shaders um, by Dirk Manning and Kaylin Smith. Obviously, you created the whole thing and then they helped you with it. Yeah. And it was recently successfully kickstarted. What was it, a matter of hours? Uh, well, it actually fully funded in, in five minutes. It was, it was our very first Kickstarter and yeah, it funded <laughs> in five minutes. And then we had, uh, I think, seven original stretch goals and they passed in three hours, three, I think. I think but less than three it's hours. It's been really, really fun because it's a new creative project for us. And, and we've been able to be so involved with it, which is yeah. amazing. Every little step along the way, we've we've you know been there helping to create it yeah, writing a comic has always been something we thought would be really cool but we thought it would be something way down the line mm -hmm. but then when we met Dirk and it turned out he was a fan of our music and we started telling him our ideas for our own comic book he said wait a second don't tell me anything <laughs> we're not we're not signing we haven't signed contracts <laughs> but it's been really great working with with both Dirk and Kaylin, mm -hmm. they're both total professionals so great so great they, they take everything we say and they um, really uh, work with our ideas, yeah. our vision for it, since we want, it's our kind of our story and they really- Not, not our story, like a uh, autobiographical. Not, <laughs> not autobiographical. Not <laughs> but it's a Nordic fantasy adventure and it's really fun. Yeah, yeah, so is that what the comic's gonna be about? I mean, without giving away the story. Okay, oh, okay. Oh, um, me well, say. it's about- There are um, dragons from what I understand. Well, but they're, they're shaders. Yes. <laughs> they're they're dragon-like dragon -like creatures. -like creatures. It's about uh, two uh, Nordic, identical twin sisters and uh, their cat Grayling and they think they have this kind of normal Just, life uh, yeah very kind of, calm and peaceful and they, they then they realize and they find out in the story that these shader creatures of legend might not be myth and that their things might be a little more complicated in their lives than they originally thought. had thought <laughs> okay, and this Kickstarter is still going on? It is. It's uh, throughout the entire month of November. We're calling it Nordic November, um, yes. but we started November 1st, and it's ending November 30th. Okay, I meant this interview will be out before then, so right. people awesome. will still have time to check that out. And I heard earlier today you two were promoting it um, with Dirk and Kay Lynn, and you two roasted Dirk. <laughs> But in good, good, I good fashion. I don't know what everyone keeps everyone saying, saying that does. We, we, we just, we have a very joking type of uh, it's a thing going on with Dirk and Kaylin. And it's, well, it's, there's, there's four people as part of our team for Legend of the Shaders and three of them are female. So, so Dirk, Dirk is kind of the odd he's, man he's the out, man literally. Out. No. So we have to give him some grief. Yeah. No, it's, it's all good. Cause I did a, I did a great prank on Kaylin. Um, on Friday, because last year, I mean, because I go to the Grand Rapids Comic Con every year as press. I took a photo of her and uh, like, I made her do like a cheesy pose. You know, it was just like, and it was ridiculous. And I was like, I think I might turn that into a poster for you. And she's like, yeah, whatever. And then I showed up this year with like a 20 by 24 oh and gosh. I handed it to her and she's like, what is going on? And Dirk saw it and he couldn't help but laugh. And I would have her parade that photo around from time to time throughout the whole weekend. Oh, that's amazing. So I know how it goes. And it's- K Kaylin is awesome. Oh, we just, we love her artwork. She's it's, great. Her and art is just gorgeous. And I feel like it fits so well with the way that the story is and progressing. And kind of how we envisioned the comic in the first place. She's amazing. Yeah, it's perfect. We love her. So all right. If people- oh, We love you too, Dirk. Oh yeah. If you're, <laughs> you're assuming Dirk's oh, gonna watch this, no. that's, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I don't love Dirk at all. No, Dirk's been super cool. He was the one who uh, did the formal introduction of me to you two, and he I did. truly, right. totally, he, truly appreciate the words that. that he said about me. So if people wanted to find out more about you online, where could they go? Uh, our website is harptwins.com. And then you can link from there to all our social media sites, and you can so find everything. the easiest way to then branch off to wherever you might be out there in the world. <laughs> Facebook, yeah. Instagram, Twitter. YouTube. And final question, what would you like to say to your fans throughout the years? Oh my goodness, oh. huge, huge thank you. We have just the most incredible community. And I think that even showed when we started this Kickstarter, a, a pro type of project that we've never done before, a comic book. And we just really appreciate your support and the fact that you believe in us and enjoy our music and are sharing in our adventure. Thanks so much. Well, Camille and Kennerly, thank you so much for this interview. Thank, thank you. you. No problem. Folks, this is Joe from My Geek Scene. I'm here um, with the Harp Twins, once again, after hours, after the Grand Rapids Comic Con. Take it easy. Mm -hmm.